So a while ago, I made a video about Teen Beach Movie, one of Disney Channel's biggest movies ever. I mean, Magic Surfboards, Evil Scientist, Jordan Fisher, what more could you possibly need? Well, two years after Teen Beach Movie came out in 2015, Disney Channel gave us the long-awaited sequel. And you know, you guys tried to warn me about this movie, okay? But oh my goodness, whatever I was expecting, I was way off. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take a walk. So Teen Beach 2 starts out with Brady and Mac on the beach of all places. I know, crazy, right? Talking about their summer. But before that, really quick, this video was brought to you by Dashlane. If you're like me, in which case, <laughs> that's rough. You probably find yourself using the same password over and over again for different things, right? But of course, if one password gets hacked, before you know it, all your personal information's been stolen and someone's using your credit card to buy 150 copies of Ham Taro Ham Ham Heartbreak. Being someone who uses the internet for pretty much everything, it's invaluable to have that extra level of security that Dashlane can give you. Dashlane is a one-stop shop for your digital identity. It manages all your passwords, personal info, financials, whatever you need, making your life safe and more secure. It works across all devices, including Apple products, products, PCs, Android, Safari, and Chrome. It also has a secure autofill feature that works for personal information, credit cards, that type of thing. It comes with a VPN to stop people from tracking you, and they even check if your personal information is being sold on the dark web. So to try Dashlane for free for life on your first device, go to dashlane.com slash alexmyers, and you can use my promo code alexmyers to get 25% off if you decide to upgrade to the premium version. So the link is down below, and once again, thank you Dashlane for sponsoring this video. Okay, back to the show. It's beautiful. I had to do something cool for a anniversary. It all happened right here. You were walking to the beach, I sat there watching Wet Side Story on my tablet. And I thought, who is the surfer dude with the shiny hair? And you said... Wanna watch the awesomest movie ever made? And I said, heck yeah I do. Turn off that weird 1960s garbage you're watching and pop in some Muppet Treasure Island. But anyway, so to celebrate their three month meetiversary, they watch the last 10 minutes of Wet Side Story and then they go off on the ocean to talk about feelings and stuff. <laughs> Splash me again, see what happens, I dare you. Mac, you think things will be different for us at school? We were in school all last year together. And we never met, that's my point. Well, I mean, I did see you once in the cafeteria, but you were talking to your friends about how, like, your anime waifu was actually a 900-year-old dragon princess who just looks like she's 12, so it's actually not that weird, guys, or something like that. So I just kind of noped out of there. Now, right after this, Mac realizes that she's in a Disney Channel movie. No. No, 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 no. And also that she lost the necklace she was wearing. Now, this necklace is important because she got it from Layla at the end of the first movie. And it's like the one thing she has from that time she got magically transported into a 1960s beach movie universe, which kind of sounds like the title of some weird anime I would never watch. But all the same, the very next day, it's back to school for the first day of their senior year. Whip, whip. Bap, bap. Whoop. Yes. Hey. Whoop. Whip, whip. Bap, bap. Whoop. Yes. Hey, whip, whip! Bam, bam! Yes! Hey! Whoop! Ah. Dude, I was Indonesia! Oh man, the swells were nectar! Three more pearls, my hombre! The waves were all like, moo moo! And I was like, bro! Hey, so like. What if you just didn't do any of that ever again? Also, shout out to Brady over here, going to school be trousered in swim trunks. I swear, every school's got one of these kids. Hey, we get it, you like surfing. Anyway, then we flash over to Mac and see how she's getting along. Big Save the Beach dance this weekend. Buy a ticket, save a seal. Oh, come on, who doesn't love seals? Wolf sharks, but they don't like anyone. <laughs> hey, how was your summer? Oh, beyond. Science camp was epic, the college tour was fabbing. Don't even get me started on the student government conference. No. Yeah, so as you might have guessed, turns out Mac and Brady couldn't be more different. Hmm, I wonder if they're gonna have trouble navigating their new relationship. So throughout the day, we see their personality differences further highlighted, with Brady and his friend just being like, Bruh! and Mac and her friend are all smart and get good grades. Pfft, <laughs> a bunch of losers, am I right? Hey. Hey. What you working on? Uh, nothing. Okay. This is fantastic. Mac! I got all the good stuff. Score! <laughs> I'm gonna go fire up the centrifuge. Oh, Spencer. Oh my goodness, this dude's in this movie? This guy's been stuck in high school for like eight years now. But yeah, so it turns out once life went back to normal, Mac and Brady's relationship isn't really quite holding up anymore, especially with this Spencer kid showing up like this, being all tall and Spencer y. You're right, this program is awesome. I mean, you'd love it. Mac! <sighs> you know, you could have at least shot me a text. You were 45 minutes late. What were you doing? Did you just forget? It's nothing. Nothing. Something. I don't want to talk about it. Well, you won't even tell me why you stood me up. Well, maybe we just don't work at school. Maybe we don't. Awesome. 
And so Brady's so upset he goes off to sing a song, as you do. But after he's done doing all that, Brady heads over to the beach and guess who he finds there? I'm just going surfing. I'm just cleaning the beach. Of course, you're cleaning the beach in my favorite surf spot. Huh? Your surf spot happens to be where there's a lot of trash. What's that supposed to mean? It means that there's a lot of actual trash here and I'm cleaning it up. I mean, just look at all this trash I found. There's a whole pile of plastic bottles and the entire After franchise. But right then, just out of nowhere, you'll never guess what happens. Mac, what? Would you think I was crazy if I told you the two people that look exactly like Layla and Tanner are walking towards us on this beach? <laughs> So what we find out is that after Mac and Brady left at the end of Teen Beach Movie 1, things have been a little off, with Layla not really feeling like she wants to, you know, relive the same movie for the four trillionth time. You know, it's kind of like after you break up with someone and then you're like, woof, I'm glad that's finally over. And then two weeks later they call you up like, hey, remember all those good times we never had? Well, what if we did that again? Okay, wow, you're here with us. <laughs> Why? How? I found the necklace. But I lost the necklace in the ocean and it floated back to me. I knew it was a sign. <laughs> I had to find you. So I carried the necklace out into the water questioning my whole existence and i didn't question anything <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, real talk though, this is the kind of dude in high school who somehow ends up dating like every cheerleader. But anyway, so the next chunk of the movie is just this kind of fish out of water sequence with Layla and Tanner going to school with Mac and Brady and like trying to fit in. Layla discovers these new revolutionary things called math and books and she's all like, I love studying. And then we got Tanner over here who's just doing this. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Like, anyone would actually think this guy's cool. I mean, he's way too happy and content with life. Okay, something ain't right. Also, shout out to this girl over here, just having the time of her life, giving him that look you make when you're at a buffet and they restock the cheesecake right when you get there. But anyway, back to the actual movie. Are you getting the impression that people here are a little standoffish and, well, meanish? Why is everyone sitting apart? Well, come on, everyone, where's your smile? And then, no joke here, they sing a song about how everyone just needs to smile more. This completely shatters the entire social hierarchy at school. Like, the status quo has been ripped asunder because turns out all I had to do to fix my self-esteem and social anxiety issues was just smile my problems away. But all the same, for whatever reason, Mac and Brady are still dead set on getting Layla and Tanner to go back to their world by trying to show them that this future world is really not all that great if you think about it. I never knew I could be so happy. I love it all. The challenging classes, the interesting conversations, the flavored lip gloss. I mean, really, triple vanilla kiwi berry? <laughs> <laughs> Layla, here's the thing. Our world isn't really all that great. Oh, there's finals and taxes and global warming. TikTok, Twitter, Cardi B, six after movies? I mean, trust me, get out while you can, Layla. After this, Layla suddenly changes from her 1960s look into a sort of modern normal getup, and Mac just kind of stares at her for a while like, ah, uh, Brady who? But this also means that she and Tanner are shifting away from their world and will become permanently stuck in the real one, which is a bad thing, apparently. They could be stuck here forever, or the whole fabric of our reality could just rip open. We gotta get them back. Well, maybe we should just tell them where they're from, what they do. Are we worried what that might do to them? Oh, we're running out of options, Mac. Layla! Tanner, you just made up characters from a movie. You are not real. Huh? Maybe I would have eased it into him a little more gently. I'm sorry, what's that, Brady? Maybe I would have eased it into him a little more gently. But all the same, Layla and Tanner take this news about as well as you'd expect, I guess. You like to serve? I know. Hey, it's I us doing things we usually do. You guys are from an imaginary world, a movie world, it's where Mac and I met. Pretty sure you didn't meet Mac in the movie world, okay? You two had already been dating long before that was a thing. Brady, you doing okay? So this sets in motion the last part of the movie where because Layla and Tanner are turning into real people, somehow this is causing the wet side story world to start disappearing. Now Layla doesn't want to go back to her world because she, uh, <clears throat> loves learning calculus too much. <laughs> okay, all right, if you say so. I'm sorry. But no. I want to stay here. Forever. So she throws her necklace back into the ocean, which is then found by Layla's brother back in the 1960s world, who takes some of his buddies and comes to the real world to bring Layla and Tanner back, because they all just kind of figured out how this space-time continuum thing works and how to fix it. But Layla, I'm your brother. Don't you miss me? Well, I'm starting to find myself here, Budgie. 
I'm happy. Back home, things are starting to disappear. Like, peoples, peoples are just starting to sparkle up and poof, and they vanish. Layla and Tanner are the stars of the movie. Without the stars... There's no movie. I've got to go back. It's our job. And so, just like that, all the conviction and everything Layla had like five seconds ago just goes right out the window and she's all like, Okay, fine, I guess I'll give up trigonometry to save the universe. But then literally, like the very next scene, there's this school dance thing, and the entire cast of Wet Side Story just walks in. Like we didn't just have this whole emotional scene that tied up Layla's character arc about how she goes from being some biker bimbo girl to wanting to find herself, whatever that means. And then Tanner's whole character arc was just him going, <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, whatever, y'all here now. We still got like 30 minutes left this movie, so sure, why not? Tanner, what are you doing here? I'm here for you, Brady. For, for me? You and Mac, it was Tanner's idea. Look, the way I see it is, it, it's not right that things aren't right with you two, so we came to help make things right. <laughs> That's my way. Yeah, I know my alternate reality world is gonna fade from existence at any moment, but that's not important. What really matters is that these two random teenagers don't break up yet so we can get another couple songs out of them. I mean, hey, CDs don't buy themselves, you know what I'm saying? And then they have a big song and dance number about how like, yeah, sure, maybe we're completely different and pretty much not compatible in any way whatsoever, but like, hey, we're both young and attractive, so obviously we shouldn't break up. You know, there's so many teen movies out there about how like being totally incompatible is actually a good thing somehow. Anyway, so then we arrive at the very end of the movie. Everyone disappears except except Layla and Tanner, including Layla's brother, which means the necklace is now gone forever. Oh no! Oh, oh no, 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 no! Ah! Oh. Oh. she's... He's gone. With the necklace. And so they grab the surfboard from the first movie, but there's no waves they can surf, and of course they can't just paddle it out there themselves because the writers forgot that was a thing. So they do the only logical option they have left. The only one's left. We have to go. But how? You need waves to surf. Okay. Here, take these pliers right here, and you're gonna put it under the emblem and you're gonna pry it off, okay? <sighs> Look at that, we did it! Wait, 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 oh, that's it. So you're telling me the whole mystical surfboard ancient friendship magic thing, whatever, from the first movie, you're telling me that was just a sticker the whole time? Mac and Brady got teleported into an alternate 1960s dimension because of some decal her grandpa bought on Clarence at Pac Sun? That's what these movies are about? Anyway, so after ripping off this Quicksilver sticker, or whatever this is, they put it onto a surfboard that Brady built with a motor in the back because, oh yeah, by the way, Brady likes to build these Decepticon Transformer robot surfboards in his free time. Whoops, probably should should have mentioned that one. Now with Tanner and Layla about to disappear any second, Brady and Mac do what anyone would do in this situation and talk about their feelings for like 10 minutes. Brady, if this doesn't work, and Layla and Tanner vanish and the whole movie never even existed, then doesn't that mean we never even met? I mean, if they don't make it, then we won't even know each other. What does that mean? What are you talking about? Did you guys even watch the first movie? And then they sing a song about like love or something. Again, Layla and Tanner are literally seconds away from vanishing into the place wherever it is that socks go when you put them in the dryer. And y'all are singing a song? Disney Channel movies, they don't always make sense. I'll never forget you. Again. <laughs> Me neither. When you get back to your world, it doesn't have to be the way it was. Okay, you can start a math club or or create a new type of lip gloss. <laughs> Change the movie. So we're just gonna ignore that the whole first movie was about how they cannot change anything? Things have to go exactly the right way, otherwise the whole universe stops. I mean, that was the entire point of the first one. And now, never mind, just kidding, you can change whatever you want. And we're just supposed to let them retcon all the lore they already established in this franchise? Well, just spit in my face, why don't you? Uh, sir, could you just pull ahead and grab your food, please? So Layla and Tanner head back to their world and immediately reality changes. Mac and Brady suddenly don't know each other at all. Because, as we come to find out, Layla did somehow change the movie, and therefore Mac and Brady could never have possibly met. Here you go. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Party for one for the big shindig tonight. What's up? Can I help you? Yeah, I gotta ask. What's with the big screen and the outfits? Oh, it's a fundraiser. Yeah, we're saving the beach. It's a 1962 beach movie party. Layla, queen of the beach. So let me just try and make sense of all this. Mac and Brady were dating before the beginning of the first movie, but actually, just kidding, they met after they went into the West Side Story world? You guys are from an imaginary world, a movie world, where Mac and I met. And that's why they have to send Layla and Tanner back so the movie still exists, but then Layla goes back and changes the movie anyway, which was firmly established as impossible in Team Beach 1, but hey, whatever, right? So Layla changes the movie, which still makes it so Brady and Mac never met, which is what they were trying to stop in the first place. So all these songs about being together and overcoming your differences and 
and true love and all that dumb garbage, the entire first hour and 20 minutes of this hour and 40 minute movie, you're telling me none of this even mattered? Disney Channel movies, why do I do this to myself? Yeah, so basically what I'm trying to say is, Team Beach 2 is, uh, really something. Hey, guess what? I have a new Spanish channel that just started up recently. What we're doing is we're completely localizing my videos into Spanish with professional voice actors and all that. So check it out, subscribe, all that good stuff. Okay, back to the show. You know, Team Beach Movie is a really good example of how old Disney Channel, I mean, all old Disney Channel, I mean like the, the 2000s Disney Channel and then the more modern Disney Channel. There's definitely something different about them. You go back and watch like High School Musical and Lemonade Mouth and, and there's a couple, I mean, there's a lot of garbage from that time too, don't get me wrong. I don't know, the stories were more simple and kind of made a little more sense back then. And then you look at modern day Disney Channel movies, you got your Descendants movies and your Zombies and of course, you know, Team Beach 1 and 2, which are a bit older, but still kind of in the modern time. You know, Team Beach 2, it's like, I don't know what, they were going for. Because <laughs> the whole thing about like, you know, now the characters in the 1960s world coming to the modern world, like, I don't know, you could have done like so much with that and you could have had the same like message and stuff. Well, the same thing happened in the first movie. In the first movie, it's like, it's a really kind of interesting, kind of cool story about like, you know, kids from the modern day going into a 1960s world and then now it's reversed. And then like the last third of the movie is just like complete nonsense. It's like, I don't know why it's so hard for them to just like come up with a conclusion to their movies. <laughs> It's like, like, I don't know. I don't get it. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com. Let me know what TV shows or movies you think I should check out next. I have a game on the App Store. Check that out. Got a podcast. Check that out. And above all, everybody have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.